she's not too happy that the boys have run into trouble with her vehicle. Are you still disqualified? Indefinitely. Unfortunately, the tow truck will be here soon to pick it up. I know it's only... True. Fishery officers, along with the local constable, are setting up a checkpoint at an area known for the poaching of large numbers of power. It's the ideal location, as it's hidden from oncoming vehicles by a sharp corner. The first vehicle comes to a screaming halt containing two young men. With these guys unaware of how many muscles they have, fishery officers are keen to get the count underway. And while that's happening, the driver is recognised by the local policeman. I've warned you before. Ah, yeah, I've marked the score for it's finished now. Is it? Yeah. We'll do a check in and make sure. Meanwhile, fisheries have finished their count. Oh, 52. It's a close call for the boys. 52. Yeah, you've got an excess oh, yeah. of two muscles. Let me call it. <laughs> you are. Yeah. You've got 102. Oh, yeah. So you've got one extra each. <laughs> yeah, just watch that counting in, mate. Get it right and no problem. It's a good natured warning from the fishery officers, but not such good news from the policemen. Are well, you still disqualified indefinitely? So it means you can't get a licence for quite a while. No, you... I'll ring up in February. No, no, it's, it's, in, it's indefinitely. Basically, it means, you can, it means you're going to be without a licence for quite a long time. Just drive this off the road, right? No, nah, it's got to get impounded, bro. Right? That's, that's mandatory. We've got no, we've got no choice on that. So. The driver's a disqualified driver, so he's going to get his vehicle impounded. The uh, policeman is going to summons him rather than arrest him, so he's lucky there. Is it in your truck? No, nah, it's actually... Uh... <laughs> and that lady has just arrived, and she's not too happy that the boys have run into trouble with her vehicle. Unfortunately, the tow truck will be here soon to pick it up. I know it's only, True. No, it's only a farm vehicle, but... Um, so how much is that going to cost to get out of the town? <laughs> the, same, the, the same as any other vehicle will cost. Oh, you'll be, you'll be diving for a long time to get that back. you got a whole 28 days to get it out of the impound here. Will he die for power and sell that? <laughs> no, he won't sell it. Oh, good. I think the ladies are a little bit upset about the young fella getting the old Jeep here impounded. <laughs> she says it's her only vehicle for rounding up cows. He was f***ing on last week about, I wonder if they'll send my licence back out in the post. Along with an earful from his auntie, the boy received a sentence of 300 hours community service and was disqualified from driving for a further one year and one day. Then it's on to the next inspection. What are you after? Oh, we just went out and grabbed some powers. Good? Yep. That's good. Have you got a permit at all? Yeah, no, we're without a permit. <laughs> Both attorney diving? Or? Yeah. <laughs> They're all undersized, I'd say, mate. There's quite a few of them. Even before the officers start their count, along with being undersized, it's obvious that there's more than the daily limit of 10 power. How many have we got there, Half? 45 we've counted. Are there any of the legal ones here? And no legal ones yet. No. I'm gutted, I mean, I've never had it like this. So. I usually just have taken my limit. It's just that I knew the weather was packing in and I haven't been out because I broke my wrist and, uh, okay. of all the times, eh? Despite his broken wrist, nobody has twisted his arm to break the law. This pack, is it separate to that one? Yeah. And who took this one? I did. All yourself? While the man may be remorseful, he's about to discover just how costly his lapse of judgment has been. The uh, bad news is that I'm going to have to seize your vehicle. Oh, true. Because you've uh, got more than three times your daily limit. Oh, well. OK. I'm sorry about that, but it's uh, mandatory that we do oh, that. Oh, no. Whereabouts do you live? Oh. Far from here? Yeah. How far? Um, on the way to Rawani. And that's uh, my partner's vehicle. And, oh, God. She needs the vehicle. Not the best. Unfortunately, I left. Is that the guy gear that you used here? And we'll be seizing that as well. Being three times over the daily limit would normally see the man's vehicle on its way back to the fisheries office, but he may be about to receive one piece of good news. 
if we're going to seize it, or we'll have to see if the boss is happy to bond it. Are you happy to bond the vehicle? These aren't our usual suspects. Uh, they live in Manoa, and we've got our driver's licence ID and everything else. Thank you. Okay, because you've been good to deal with it, no problem. I'm going to let you take your vehicle home, okay? However, I've seized it under Section 207 of the Fisheries Act. It's a lucky break, but the man has lost his illegal catch, which will be returned to the sea. Oh, well, it's always the good guys that get caught, eh? <laughs> the man received 80 hours community service and his dive gear was forfeited. On the Waitemata Harbour, the Coast Guard volunteer crew of North Shore Rescue are trying to find a boat that has radioed for help after its engine failed to start. I can see an orange boat, I can see a yellow boy, but I can't see a yellow boat. For 15 minutes, the crew search. No, nothing. Then, close to Waiheke Island, they find the broken down runabout. Yep, that's him. Um, um, this actually looks a little bit dicey. He is on Tifau Point. Just have to be careful. There's a lot of things to consider than how we get in here and deal with it because it's quite shallow, quite rocky. Suddenly, this is becoming much less straightforward than a simple jump start. Yeah, there you go. You just need a jump start. The battery's dead. He's not in a good position here. That anchor's not holding. He could be. Uh, in a little bit more trouble. While the rocks are a danger to the runabout, the runabout is quickly becoming a danger to North Shore Rescue. Just have to be careful. There's a lot of things to consider. He's got an anchor line in the water, which uh, is a danger for our props. Um, we've only really got this side to work with him on because uh, the other side is uh, kind of between a rock and a hard place, you can see. So we've got about three metres of water. If we're not careful, it could go a bit ugly. Skipper Mark's plan is to get a jump pack onto the troubled boat as soon as possible, which hopefully will provide enough juice to kick the engine back into life. Somebody go and engage with him, Derry, please, about the jump start. Okay, so if we're going to come, come alongside, one of our crew will come across with a jump start battery. That's you, Derry. During a moment of calmer seas, Derry takes advantage and jumps aboard. Hey, have you got the jump pack, Derry? Because I need to get out of here, mate. We don't want to get too close, um, otherwise the two boats coming together can get a bit um, ugly. I'm not staying okay, alongside. He's got it. OK, I'm out of here. Deary tries to work his magic on the flat battery. Yep, it's a two-stroke. It's good, though. It's a good sign. The runabout splatters back to life. <laughs> The next challenge is retrieving Deary. As the runabout's crew surfaces from the cabin, safety doesn't appear to be a priority. So he's just getting his anchor up there so we can come out a little bit further to do the transfer. A little bit concerned maybe by some lack of life jackets on there, which is a bit of a worry and a bit disappointing. Um, he's kind of wearing a, a life ring right now as a life jacket. You can see how these little situations unfold. A little problem of a flat battery can turn into more and more things. So I just stay neutral, mate. We'll come to you. We'll come to you. With Derry safely transferred back, the runabout heads home, hopefully with a lesson learned. They've been out there all day. And, uh, just ready to go home, as we see it so often. <laughs> Using the juice all day for radios and stuff like that, and, uh, and then go, go to turn the engine on and there's no juice. So uh, quite common.